Hello and welcome to What the Tech from Boost AI, where we talk with some of the brilliant minds behind new and exciting tech initiatives to learn what it takes to tackle technological uncertainty and eventually change the world. Today, I am honored to welcome a member of the Boost team onto the show, Mr. Matt Funk. Matt is Boost's VP of Customer Delivery and has been a critical member of the Boost team pretty much since the beginning. He joined Boost back in 2013 as a technology advisor and has been helping steer the ship ever since. Today, leading our customer delivery arm and ensuring that the hundreds of businesses who work with Boost enjoy maximized claims and minimal effort or stress. Along with picking his brain on what it's been like seeing Boast grow and evolve over the past decade, I'm excited to hear his take on how the funding and innovation landscape has changed throughout his tenure at Boast. From mastering the shred claim process to expanding into the United States to understanding what our customers have been up against before, today, and in the future, Matt has seen a lot. So I'm excited to dive in and understand where we've been and what's in store as Boast continues to grow and help even more innovative businesses maximize their investments into critical R&D. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Matt. Hey, Paul. Thanks for having me on, man. Good to see oh, you. Oh, my total pleasure. Uh, it's very rare that I get to speak to fellow boasters, so I'm so happy that you're kind of kicking off this series that we're going to be doing, but let's dig into it. Tell me about Matt Preboast. That's yeah, so, the part I want to know. Yeah. Sure. sure. Preboast, it's, it's been a minute, but yeah, in my former former life, uh, I was a software developer, so I spent about eight years in in industry as a, as a developer. I uh, worked at a few different companies and small companies, startups, and then some more mature companies as as well. Um, so always had a passion for for tech and and building innovative solutions and and writing code. Uh, but I got to the point in my career where I thought, you know, this is really interesting and obviously love love the guys that are and gals that are out there still writing code and you know spending a lot of time deep deep in the tech. But for me, what really was starting to get me excited was more talking to people about technology and about things that are, that are going on rather than being the guy to be cutting cutting the code so so to speak so um took a took a step back and and took a bit of a detour and moved into another area what i was also excited in for a couple of years and spent some time in financial controls uh really got some good chops in excel from from doing that, but I spent some some time doing that, and that was exciting. And then fell into into the shred world as I wanted to get back into the tech world and really like start you know doing that client facing aspect of it and talking to more people about what's going on in in the industry um, and having having some input uh, on that side of things. So ran into to the founders of of Boast and and started you know working on on shred got really excited about that because we got exposed to a lot of different tech, right? That was out there. It really was a unique opportunity to talk to CTOs and talk to lead tech leads on what's going on in the industry um, and really get their perspective on how they're pushing R&D. Uh, so there was that combining it with, with really some client facing work and also the accounting and, and financing aspect of it that got me excited about Tread and, to this day, that's why I've why I've stayed in it. I mean, I think it's it's a really cool and, and unique space to be in. And we have the opportunity to support a lot of people who are doing some very innovative and, and very, very cool stuff and finding out about all the nuances on that and being a part of it and supporting their growth and leading to their success is is something that all of us at Boast and, and myself are really passionate and excited about. Absolutely. At the risk of this sounding like a Boast love fest, you echoed why I really enjoy the opportunity being here at Boast. It's exposure to all the really, really cool stuff that our customers do. Um, that's even just simplifying it even more than just the tech of it all. We work with so many interesting individuals, so many interesting teams, and it's never boring here because we have that. Another thing that you validated, I say it very frequently on this show, we're a team of technologists over at Boast. Maybe not me here on the marketing team leading our content, but so many of the people who have helped build Boast have that real world experience. They can speak that language of innovation. They've put their hands on the tech. They, in your case, have that eight years of actual coding and design experience that predated you even coming over to the Boast team. And then another point that I really wanna pull on is kind of a unique thing about you, Matt. I've met a lot of people who love coding, a lot of people who love developing. They don't necessarily always have that itch to talk to people about innovation yeah. or to actually have that people facing stuff. So I think that, again, that's why we're such a great team, because we've got individuals like you who are rock stars and can kind of see it holistically, not just understand the tech, 
but understand the humans and understand how we can actually help them maximize what they need and align our goals with theirs. So now let's go into about boast. So what was it like when you got here? I know you mentioned our founders, Lloyd and Alex. We mentioned them frequently on the show, so waving to them. But what was kind of the lay of the land when you got there? And how have things evolved over your tenure so far? Yeah, I was really, really small and and definitely humble, humble beginnings when I started. And, and day one was working out of a hotel room because we didn't have an office. And there was just five of us. Um, and we were really, really small and really scrappy. We Alex and I knew knew Shred very, very well uh, from our previous experience. So we had that to draw on. But it was, you know, it was just getting those first first few clients and and starting to really establish the brand. So Lloyd obviously was very instrumental at at building and, and establishing the brand. And then uh, Alex and I worked very, very closely together to to build the process and and really make sure that we brought a lot of value to clients. And so our vision was, hey, like we're tech first experts. So we're different than the accounting firms. And it's still true, true today. And we've got a team of really, really strong technical people that also, as you said, Paul, uh, love to talk to to clients, but we take a tech first approach. We always did, and that's how we were successful. We really brought a ton of value to to clients and made the process very easy for our clients. Uh, we understood what they were talking about, and we never pushed work back on on clients. So make it super easy for them to give us the info that we need to build a really rock solid claim. And we just we just went from there. We just started. You know, getting testimonials from clients and really it's, it started snowballing and growing as as word got out on on the great job that the Bose did. And uh, I've had the privilege of of leading and and growing our our delivery team. And we've got a really strong team across Canada and a number of folks in the U.S. as well who all share the same passion. We want to help help our clients grow. We love to talk about tech. We love to make it simple for clients and take a process that. Nobody really wants to be involved with because they should be out there building their own applications, not having to deal with this part of the income tax act that we happen to know is very cool and very exciting. Uh, and so we take that heavy lifting away. So that's what that's what's made us successful from day one is just really making sure we do a great job putting the client first at, at everything we do and everything that we think about and, and showing lots of lots of value and doing really, really high quality work. I love that high quality work. But also, again, that it started very organically and from a very, I think, honest place, too. Like, there's the opportunity for the business on the one hand, but you guys were genuinely interested in the tech. And also, you saw what was cool about tax code, which, honestly, it's dry. I I'm a little allergic to it on my marketing side. I'm in marketing. I hate math. I hate numbers. But I do like dollar signs. And I think that the innovation that you can get from all of that. And when you put it in the context of really extending your runway and fueling even more cool stuff, that's awesome. So yeah. it's worth getting into that nitty gritty and taking on all of that. And yeah. then it might even just be recency bias, but I was talking to Patrick from CoLab. He was echoing so much of what you just said here, Matt. He was saying how he had been working with one of the big four previously. Of course, they can do a ton of broad-based bookkeeping, but when it came to actually understanding his tech, he was spending more than 100 hours across about a dozen developers on his team, just bringing them up to speed on the tech. That's not something he said he has ever had an issue with Rappos. He's like, you guys understood us from day one. We also love that you're building a product on the back end too with the Bose platform that is looking to drive efficiencies. That's what they're doing at their company. We're simpatico in that method, and especially in our mission to, again, make it simple and make it easy and make it actionable so that you can get those claims and not be bogged down. Go work on the fun innovation. Go work on that cool stuff. We'll help you get your money. So yeah, love that yeah. that's the ethos from the start and that we've held that going forward. Now, it's hard to pick your favorite baby, of course, but are there any moments over the past decade, whether it's customer wins, whether it's massive claims, or whether it's even just as a team that you'd love to shout out from your tenure here so far at Boast? It's hard to pick just one, but I'll, you know, I'll always point to to CRA audits and and give huge props to to our team that really goes to bat against the CRA for our clients and on behalf of our clients. And and not always, but most often we're we're very successful with against the CRA. When we build a claim, we know that it, it meets the criteria. That our client who's you know poured their blood, sweat, and tears 
and a lot of money into developing something, we build a claim we for them that we know is they're entitled to. Audits are are difficult for clients, but I'm always very, very proud of our team and how they stand behind the work that our clients did and the work that we did to to prepare the claim and, and defend it. And we've proven time and time again with our methodology, with our process, with our great people and how we prepare clients that we can be successful and that we are successful. So super proud of how the team, you know, puts the work together, builds the claim, and then just fights for the clients. I mean, that that's what we do, right? And that's been in our DNA since the beginning. And I've seen it throughout the years with our team and I continue to see it. It's not just, you know, we've prepared a claim and we we move on. Uh, we truly believe that, you know, clients, we need to unlock this this funding for clients and, and we help them do it time and time again. So it's great to see. And it's just great to see as we grow as a team, we still do all of those things very, very well. And I'd actually love to actually go a little bit deeper into the audits of it all. Why are we so successful when it comes to defending our clients against audits? I think you definitely alluded to some of it when you mentioned our process and I think our passion in making sure that our clients are claiming as much as they can. We try to get it right the first time, but what sets us apart specifically in the audit process? Because I feel like that part is a bit of a black box for a lot of innovators in general. They don't even understand just what the cadence of an audit would be from the CRA or the IRS. Unpack that a little bit for me. Yeah, definitely. Uh, So it's really about, you know, our process is set up to identify eligible thread work and to come up with the optimal strategy for claiming that work and for presenting it to the Canada Revenue Agency and to the IRS. That's where it starts, right? Is that we need to look at our clients' internal projects and it's not a one-to-one mapping of you did this work on this commercial project, therefore you have a, a shred project. A, a com- you know, some companies of course have, have one, one project that they work on and we claim that project, it's all thread eligible if you're building an MVP, for example. But oftentimes it's it's not so so simple and it's not so straightforward. And when you take a complex software platform that a company is building, for example, there's a number of ways that you could slice and dice it and present it to, to the CRA. So the strategy of building an RD claim is super, super important, paramount to being successful in an audit. Number one, if you build the right strategy, you will be audit resistant. So you'll likely not, you'll have less chance to get an audit. Number two, if you build the right project strategy, you get to maximize your claim and you view, you need to view the project and the work at the correct level in order to claim the maximum entitlement. And there's you know, what I what I see with people who claim work on their own is two two things. They either underclaim, so they leave a lot of money on the table, or they overclaim and they claim work that when you go to an audit, you can't defend it. So super important to maximize a claim that you can you can defend. Your strategy sets you up for that. And then when you do go to an audit, when you present it in the way that this CRA wants, and we know this from having done thousands of claims throughout the last decade plus, there is a there is a way that the CRA reviews and evaluates claim. And, and our process is designed to make it easy for the CRA to say, yes, we see that this work meets the eligibility criteria and difficult for them to say no. So the the process that we've come up with has proven to be very, very effective over time. I like that. We make it easy for them to say yes. I think you have hit on a few points. Actually, that would be very clarifying for founders in our audience too, that filing for shred, claiming shred, it's strategic. I think a lot of folks will see like a pure play software provider out there, for instance, who may claim they can completely automate the shred claim process. A lot of times that's just checking boxes and they are rinsing and repeating the actual process. And sure, they have flashy software behind them, but there's not that strategy behind it that will make sure that you're bulletproof in an audit. And again, no one can 100% guarantee that you won't get audited by working with one provider versus another. The CRA has to do their due diligence. I think the um, I think it's about 25% have to get audited every year by default. So it's going to come for you eventually if you're filing for shred on a regular basis, I think. But that strategy and that subjectiveness, shred is not objective. Yes, there are criteria yet you have to meet, but you have to compile a story and you have to tell that story and you have to understand the innovation from the inside out to communicate that to the CRA and to your point make it hard for them to say no. And I think that's really what sets us apart. We got that technology piece that I think some of those pure play software providers put out there, but we listen, 
we understand the innovation and we strategize to make sure that it's as bulletproof as possible. So, and then, and then to add on to that, the part that I haven't touched on is you need to have documentation and evidence to support the claim and support number one, the technical story that you're telling and that you're describing, and also the financials that, that you're claiming and the amount of time that you're claiming for each engineer on your team, for example. So what we do in our, our approach and where it is different is from definitely from the big four accounting firms who, who don't have this is we have a product approach. We'll integrate with our clients, technical systems and their financial systems, gather that that data that we need to defend the claim when we go to an audit. So the data that we gather first on the on the technical side helps us identify the work that we're going to claim and, and use less of our clients time in order to do so. And then it becomes the evidence that we need to show the CRA in an audit. So when you go to an audit, CRA will say, okay, you told me a story about the work you've done and how you're advancing technology. You know, if I'm the, the CRA might say, I buy that, that makes sense to me. Now show me that you did it and prove it. So what we do as part of our process is gather all that ticket information, for example, during the claim preparation process and through our, through our product so that we have it when we go to the CRA and we can present work logs to this area that says if we've described this portion of work that's eligible, we've got the evidence in the and the work logs and the evidence to to back it up. So it becomes very difficult for this area to say no, this doesn't count because how can they can't they can't refute it. Yeah, I think you're actually hitting on something that is goes a little unspoken about what we actually really offer to the clients and customers that we partner with here at Boast. Going back to another interview we did recently with a client, uh, Dimitro from Deskry. He was talking about how he completely reimagined how he approaches R&D after working with Boast because of this documentation point that you're making here. He's like, we weren't that organized and we had a lot of trouble the first few times we tried doing it. We worked with Boast, we understood the platform integrations and it made clear what the burden of proof would be and what we actually had to bring to the table on our end. And that's not, again, making it work for the customers we are partnering with to file their shred claims or to create their shred claims, but it's having them get their house in order too, making it so that their R&D is not just documented, but their processes are optimized as a result. You can identify areas for optimization when you have that full picture. And again, our platform helps you get that full picture. We integrate all the necessary data from the different areas of the business without calling on individuals to come over and actually shepherd it and then explain it. You get your payroll, you get your workflows, you get your uh, financials all in that one place. And then you can tie outcomes to investments and vice versa. And then again, have that data to defend the claim, defend that story that you're talking about that we try to make for our customers. So I just want to make sure that we really push on that because I think in the future too, that's going to be some of the great stuff that you get out of working with Boast. We're more than just the R&D tax claims. We're about optimizing your product roadmap in general and making sure that you can get the most out of it. So on that point, I'd love to know, looking forward, what are you excited about for Boast? We've had a lot of change over the past year. I, I know I've alluded to it on the show. Um, I've had a great time riding this wave, but w- what's in store for us uh, and what are you excited about from your approach on the CD side? Yeah, you just you just touched on a couple things that I'll, I'll expand on a bit. So we've talked a lot about the shred process and how we prepare a claim and that's somewhat looking looking backwards, but it's really that you know, becoming a strategic and a trusted advisor for our clients that gets me most excited. And the way this is going to to roll out is through product and through our, through our service. So we're building products so that we can get visibility into product roadmaps and look at what's upcoming for our clients to give advice to them on, for example, how are the best ways to structure how you're documenting work? Uh, How do you view your roadmap and maybe having to make a choice between product A, B, and C, it might impact your future thread claim for next year. Uh, maybe we've just prepared a claim for you, for example, and we've seen that you know, you're using Jira in, in a certain way, but compared to other clients who are maybe a little bit more mature, there's different ways that you can use Jira so that you can be more audit robust in the future. So our team combined with our product is going to be looking at at data to give strategic advice to clients. How do you improve your documentation? How do you strategize on which work to tackle and which work to not tackle so that you can have a larger claim in the future? 
Um, and then the next the next part of it is going even above and beyond that, which we're really excited about what our product and engineering team is cooking up on R&D insights. So we want to take this above just doing shred, but we're in a really unique position in that we have data, technical, financial, accounting data. We can get a really good picture and provide some insights for CTOs and for CFOs that can help them understand the ROI on their investments and make future decisions on where to put their R&D dollars. So we don't want to just be that provider that prepares a shred claim. We've got so much data and we've got so much expertise, and this is where we're building our product and constantly improving our service. So we can be that partner with our clients to really help them accelerate and make have them make some big, big decisions that that shapes their not only their future shred claim, but their R&D in general. So that's what that's what gets me excited about, and that's what's that's what's coming over the next while. Yeah, absolutely. It's really exciting. And again, I know that we have talked a lot about shred dealer, but we're in the States too, R&D tax credits. It's anybody who's doing some unique innovation and they're an R&D focused business and that's at the center of their product runway. There's an opportunity to work smarter. If you partner with Boast, have us put all your data into that one single source of R&D intelligence so that you don't have to stretch yourself then on one hand, trying to figure out how you should structure your R&D workflows on your own, but again, leverage everything that comes out of that. So not just insights, but the tax credits when that makes sense. And even our team, even the folks on our side who have that expertise in the field. I'd love to know, Matt, what's your take on the current state of startups? We're from a unique perch rate here in that we work with a lot of the coolest companies building new stuff in the US and in Canada. But you hear a lot of doom and gloom too. Um, I know that we're waiting on a rate change here in the States. I know Canada's already done one, but what's your take on the current startup landscape and maybe some sage wisdom for anyone looking to become an entrepreneur in 2024? Yeah, I mean, in, in Canada, make sure you obviously take advantage of all the government funding programs, Shred being a, a hugely important one where you can get 65 cents on the dollar back on eligible R&D. So take, take that very seriously and plan and and obviously work with work with a qualified provider such as Bose to get you set up for success, right? Is make sure you're you're documenting work in in the right way so that when it comes time to prepare a shred claim, you're you're set and you're ready, you're ready to go. So certainly some some challenges out there. Um, but there's a lot of government incentive programs that are here here to support and definitely take take advantage. Come talk to us as well. Uh, we don't just do shred, but we'll point people to assistance that you can help people get connected with different grant providers or uh, different ways to set up your company to to get going on um, the US same same thing so some changes coming in in the IRS program in the future that it will make it a little bit more challenging for people who aren't prepared to claim R&D tax but the program's not going away it's still there so just make sure you get qualified help and and make sure you're getting yourself set up so that you can take advantage of it Absolutely. And I'm going to um, hammer home a point you made too. It's come talk to us. Uh, e even if it's not necessarily uh, already tax credit play, we are members of the tech ecosystem. We are members of the community. I say it constantly on the show in the US and Canada. Part of what has set us apart from the start going all the way back to Lloyd and Alex was that we're elbow to elbow with members of our community. And so if we don't necessarily have the resource in-house that you need to get something done, we want to help you out and we can get you connected with somebody in that realm. So we're all about community here at Boast. It's what we're doing on the What the Tech podcast. It's why it's taken me so long to have someone from the Boast team actually on the show because we're talking to all of our partners in the ecosystem. But Matt, this was a total pleasure. I cannot thank you enough for hopping on the mic with me. Indeed. I love that. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate it.